Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, our Truth Skin Health products, formulations, ingredients, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we love hearing from you. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Check out our blog posts and news stories. You can purchase products off the website, and you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks by spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, get your products at the wholesale price, get tax benefits associated with having your own business, make your own hours, be your own boss. If you're entrepreneurially minded, this is an ideal business to check out. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can start a business for $25 and help change the world with the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Okay. Welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We are talking plant nutrition on the Bright Side. You're Nutritional program dedicated to understanding supplementation, diet plans, alternatives to drugs. If you're stuck in the morass of the medical model and you're not getting any benefit from it, if you're only making things worse with your surgeries and your drugs, the ideas we talk about on this program are things you want to at least take under advisement, if not completely incorporate into your lives, especially the, what we've been talking about here now for the last couple of weeks, and that is the plant nutrients the non-essential substances These are not essential in the sense that the mighty 90 are essential, but you know what? They may be essential. The health benefits of these things, specifically the polyphenols that we've been talking about, as well as the impossibility of getting them in the body without ingesting them, argues for a certain sort of essentiality that is similar to the mighty 90 and may very well be just, may very well make these polyphenols just as essential as the mighty 90 essential nutrients, even though we don't ordinarily consider them so. That's why you want to be using polyphenols from veggies and to a certain extent from fruits as well as spices and herbs daily, multiple times a day, especially spices. Spice everything. Use pepper and cayenne and uh, turmeric and ginger and clove and cinnamon, wherever you can. Spices could be thought, you could think of spices like a nutritional supplement, like a polyphenol nutritional supplement. Spice everything. We started this discussion off a couple weeks ago by talking about the major class of plant nutrients, the uh, polyphenols, and we talked about uh, how these polyphenols are related to estrogen, and we talked about how they're protective against estrogen. 
which while most people will tell you is a female hormone, is actually a stress management hormone, a growth hormone, and a connective tissue hormone. When uh, estrogens are not handled correctly and efficiently by the body, when the detox system, particularly the liver and the intestine and the gallbladder and the bile are somehow not operating at peak efficiency, estrogen toxicity will ensue. When you're dealing with what is called dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, you can rest assured estrogen toxicity will ensue. And this estrogen toxicity is linked to all kinds of health challenges, cancer, autoimmune diseases, fibrosis, sclerosis, stenosis, the hardening of the body. That is the quintessential uh, aspect of the aging process. The essence of the aging process is this hardening or fibrosis that can be related to estrogen toxicity, which in turn can be related to messed up gut bacteria and other digestive health issues. In fact, if you have any estrogen problems, whether it's autoimmunity or PMS or infertility or, or um, uh, uh, stress, uh, a, a, an a, amped up stress response or fibrosis, you can rest assured you probably got some kind of digestive health issue. And if you do have a digestive health issue and some doctor puts you on hormone replacement therapy, you are playing with fire. If you have a digestive health issue, correct it before you go on HRT. If you have a gallbladder removed, it's probably not a wise idea to go on HRT. If you have a history of Crohn's disease or, uh, uh, or uh, uh, ulcerative colitis or irritable bowel syndrome, it is probably not a good idea to go on hormone replacement therapy. And any doctor who puts you on it should go back to medical school and study the relationship between the digestive system and the hormone system and hormone detoxification. The polyphenols, which get their name from their very interesting shape, multi-phenol, poly meaning many, phenol meaning circle. A phenol is a, a, just a kind of a circle chemical structure. If you remember your, your chemistry from high school, you remember the, all, the, all those cool little chemical structures. Well, I think they're cool. A lot of people think they're intimidating, but they always have little circles or rings, they call them. The ring is technically called a phenol. And a polyphenol is a structure that has just a bunch of rings. And there's lots of things in, chemi in, in the natural world that have these rings. The polyphenols are one of them. And anything that has lots of these rings is going to be related to the estrogen system. The polyphenols block estrogen. They're said to be weak estrogen blockers. They're like a safer form of estrogen. They pro or, I'm sorry, weak estrogen binders, not blockers. Weas weak estrogen binders. They're like a safer form of estrogen. And they provide protection from the stronger forms of estrogen. The stronger forms of estrogen come from drugs, from plastics, from uh, derivatives of estrogen that are not properly cleared out uh, by the body. By the way, if you're interested in clearing out estrogen and you have a digestive health issue, get to know fiber, especially soluble fiber. Well, both forms of fiber are protective against estrogen for different reasons, but using fiber every day is one of the all-time great strategies for improving detoxification, for improving biofunction, and for helping clear the body of excess estrogen. So if you're dealing with an estrogen issue, in addition to making sure you're getting lots of these polyphenols, flavonoids and, and lignins and still beans, all the things we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, excuse me, make sure also that you're getting lots of fiber. Soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Make yourself a nice fiber drink with chia seeds and flax seeds and throw in some cinnamon and, and clove. It'll be an a incredible estrogen protection beverage. And if you put a little bit of honey in there, it tastes delicious too, or a little bit of stevia, it'll taste really awesome. Grind up your flax seeds, grind up your chia seeds, maybe an ounce of flax seeds, a couple tablespoons of flax seeds, maybe a teaspoon or a couple teaspoons of chia seeds. You can, you can kind of mix them up as you see fit. Then put a little clove, a little cinnamon, a little ginger, maybe even a little turmeric in there. And you'll get the, the uh, anti-estrogen and medicinal benefits of the turmeric. Put some stevia, put some honey, stir it up. Delicious. Put a little almond milk or a little coconut oil in there. It's a delicious, and it's, by the way, that's a gr it's a great diet beverage too because the fiber will fill you up. Start off your morning with it. Have it for breakfast. Clear out all those toxins that have been building up during the night. This similarity, this weak similarity between uh, the, uh, the uh, polyphenols and estrogen also gives the polyphenols a little bit of estrogen properties too. So they block estrogen toxicity, but you also get a little bit of estrogen benefits too, especially when it comes to our connective tissue. All right, we'll continue this discussion when we come back from our break, and then we will also continue talking about my favorite 
or one of my favorite topical skincare ingredients, shea butter. When we come back on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. We've got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, estrogen, the polyphenols, detoxification, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you want to take a peek at our Truth Skin Health products, if you're dealing with accelerated aging or acne blemishes, or you want to prevent acne blemishes or prevent accelerated aging, dark spots on the skin, if you want a general skin tonic, you want to be using retinol and you want to be using enough of it, and you want to make sure you're using it without preservatives, without fragrances, without fillers, without waxes, without emulsifiers, without water, without surfactants, without propylene glycol and vegetable oil, And that's why you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and uh, Truth Balm, all made with vitamin C and never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, oil, silicon, propylene, glycol, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Check check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we will get to you at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. We're talking about the polyphenols. Before we went to break, I was uh, talking about the relationship of the polyphenols to connective tissue, and this probably has something to do with their estrogen-like properties, as there's, uh, there is a, a very well-known relationship between estrogen and connective tissue, especially bone. It's a rare doctor who will not give some menopausal or or perimenopausal woman estrogen for osteoporosis because all doctors know that estrogen is involved in making fibers hard, not necessarily in a good way. Estrogen is also associated with fibrosis of tissues, and fibrosis of tissues is not a good thing. One upside to the polyphenols is they can provide collagen with a certain flexibility and strength without causing excessive fibrosis. They can induce what is known as cross-linking, particularly in bone and in teeth. Reading here from, uh, from the journal Hepatobiliary uh, Pancreatic Disease, the effects of T polyphenols on hepatic fibrosis in rats with alcoholic liver disease. Apparently, the uh, antifibrotic effects of these polyphenols can help you if you're dealing with liver disease. Fibrosis of the liver, fibrosis of the kidney, fibrosis of the heart, These are all very serious conditions, and these are all responsible for many, I believe, for in many instances, for disease and even death. You can't really, you can't really talk about liver disease or even heart disease or kidney disease without talking about excessive formation of fibers. Excessive formation of fibers is a function of the hormone estrogen, and it's a function of chronic wounding which is secondary to nutritional deficiencies. If you've been diagnosed with fibrosis in any way, shape, or form, you can rest assured you're dealing with a combination of toxicity and nutritional deficiency. And one of the best things you could do is start to eat a lot of veggies and make sure you're getting lots of polyphenols and make sure you're using antifibrotic substances like progesterone and perhaps pregnenolone. We're going to talk about the polyphenols from tea a little bit later. Polyphenols from tea are not only important for health, they're also important for sun protection. They're important for uh, skin cancer protection. And they're also, of course, very tasty and delicious, green tea in particular. I try to do a little bit of green tea every day myself. And they're very cheap. That's another neat thing about the polyphenols. They're cheap. You You can get a big dose of polyphenols for pennies, from celery, from tea from a banana. That's one of the neatest things about produce is how ridiculously cheap it is per unit, per dose. It might not be per pound, it might not be all that cheap, but per unit, per dose, per bite, it's the cheapest food there is. And not to mention packed with nutrition. 
Don't be misled by the high water content of these uh, of celery and cucumber and peppers and other veggies because they are absolutely loaded with nutritional value, especially in the peels. A lot of these polyphenols, in fact, I would say most of these polyphenols, most of these medicinal compounds that are found in veggies are in the peel. All right, I want to continue talking. We started last Friday talking about my one of my all-time favorite skin ingredients, which is uh, shea butter. Shea butter also rich in polyphenols, a particularly interesting kind of polyphenol called phytosteroids. Phyto always means plant. Phytonutrients means plant nutrients, and phytosteroids means plant steroids. These phytosteroids are very similar to cholesterol. If you look at the chemical structure of cholesterol and you look at the chemical structure of a phytosteroid, they look pretty much the same, a little bit different. And this allows the phytosteroids to block cholesterol or to protect against excess cholesterol the way phytoestrogens protect against excess estrogens. And estrogen and cholesterol are also very similar. So you can use these phytosterols for a lot of, there's a lot of benefits for these phytosterols. If you're interested in lowering cholesterol levels, phytosterols can help do that. Phytosterols tell the body there's enough cholesterol, and so it downregulates its own production. Remember, most cholesterol that we have floating around in the blood doesn't come from food. It comes from our own liver and our own cells. And when we eat these phytosterols, our body thinks that we got enough cholesterol. It downregulates its own cholesterol. Now, I'm not sitting here promoting lowering cholesterol as some kind of health strategy because cholesterol is very important. I'm just saying these things act like natural statin drugs, non-toxic statin drugs. Not as potent as statin drugs, but they have the same kind of effects. Now, topically, cholesterol is another very, very underappreciated uh, substance. It's in the skin. It's a precursor to moisture factors in the skin. It's a precursor to growth factors in the skin. It may have anti, uh, maybe a precursor to antimicrobial factors, it's certainly involved in the immune system, and it's in the skin. And I never understood why it's not being leveraged in skincare products. Oh yeah, vitamin D, that's cholesterol, a, a type of cholesterol. People will tell you, oh, vitamin D comes from cholesterol. No, it doesn't come from cholesterol, it is cholesterol, a, a tweaked version of cholesterol, a derivative of cholesterol. It's, it's, it's almost, if you look at the chemical structure of vitamin D, which is one of the skin's all-time great topical vitamins, yes, used as a topical ingredient, it looks like cholesterol. So cholesterol is found in the skin. I always thought it's a, it should be used in skin ingre, skincare ingredients or in skincare products, and that's why I put it in my Truth Skin Health products. Truth Serum has cholesterol in it. My Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream has it in it. I found incredible healing benefits and anti-irritant benefits and skin softening and moisturizing benefits from topical cholesterol, and I never understood why it's not being used but it is in our true skin health products. If you want to get uh, topical phytosterols, to which aren't exactly like cholesterol, but close enough, use shea butter. Shea butter, the phytosterols in shea butter can act a little bit like cortisol. And unlike the cortisol that they give you, if you have eczema or you have some kind of topical rash, you're not going to get that nasty steroid withdrawal. Steroid withdrawal is an awful, awful condition. I got a buddy in Canada who texts me periodically. I think I talked about him before. Lauren, I don't know if you're listening out there, Lauren. He, poor guy, he had eczema, and they just, just, just kept giving him steroids. You know, every month or whatever, he would go in and get his topical steroids. Then he decided he was going to get off his steroids. Oh, my God. When he got off his steroids, his skin, it, it made me cry just to look at the pictures. You see, texting me pictures of his skin, his face on his arms. It was unbelievable. That's called topical steroid withdrawal syndrome, and it's a big problem. If you're on topical steroids, uh, you might want to consider replacing your topical steroids with a little with a little shea butter, gradually weaning yourself off the steroids and replacing it with some shea butter. Even better. We use cell phone. We are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number today. And every day we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time. If you miss a program or you want to review a topic or you want to direct a client or patient or friend or family member to a specific subject, you can go to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. We have tw uh, six years of archives with search engine with a search engine that you can uh, look for specific subjects. If you want to look up polyphenols or diabetes or uh, anti-aging or estrogen or any of the 
topics we've covered here in the last six years on the bright side. It's benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. And then also uh, brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off of brightsideben.com as well as pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can purchase our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on, we'll get to you here in just a second. Got a couple stories I want to read. Uh, this one is from uh, Dartmouth's Norris Cotton Cancer Center. Immunity against melanoma, immunity against melanoma is only skin deep. This one's really cool. Apparently, according to researchers, uh, unique immune cells called resident memory T cells, these are an important part of the immune system, and they live in the skin, quote, do an outstanding job of preventing melanoma, unquote. I love this. This tells us that the body is fully equipped to handle cancer. And the only time cancer, melanoma, or skin cancer, or any other cancer occurs is when the body is overwhelmed. So for any medical professional who tells you to wear a sunscreen to protect melanoma, you need to be doing your research. The body handles melanoma and the skin handles melanoma wonderfully. We should be not avoiding the sun but we, and wearing toxic sunscreens. We should be helping our body's immune system work. And the way you do that is by using nutrition and by uh, limiting the amount of toxicity that overwhelms the immune system. Researchers concluded, quote, while we have shown that these T cells kill melanoma in the skin, we still need to determine whether they exist in other organs such as the lung where metastatic melanoma grows, unquote. This is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, of course, you're going to have immune cells in the lung, as in everywhere else. What do you think? Just the skin has immune cells? The immune protection that is afforded to us by the divine force against cancer is, is included in the body from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. Everywhere we find that the body's immune system can handle cancer. This means two things. Number one, if we want to, don't want to have cancer, help your immune system. Number two, if you do, God forbid, have it, help your immune system. How do you help your immune system? You get on a nutritional supplement program. You limit your intake of toxicity, including sugar and drugs, illegal or legal. They're equally awful. We have this idea that because a doctor prescribes something, somehow it's better for us than an illegal drug. Not true. Vicodin, Oxycontin, they're heroin. They're the same. Just one's blessed by a doctor. Limit your intake of toxicity. Make sure, uh, and that includes sugar and digestive toxins. Support your, your digestive system. Caloric restriction, restricting your calories. Intermittent fasting, these are all stupendously valuable strategies for uh, boosting the immune system. Make sure that you're using a nutritional supplement program that features things like vitamin C and vitamin E, also the polyphenols, selenium, zinc. Support the, uh, uh, strengthen the immune system with nutritional supplements. Keep the toxicity from getting into the body. And oh yeah, don't forget about the importance of spirituality, mental strategies, and emotional techniques. They're all important. Spirituality is not to be underappreciated when it comes to health. I know we talk about nutrition and health, but too often health shows and nutrition shows forget to talk about the spiritual aspect. And it doesn't have to be anything religious. Spirituality doesn't necessarily mean religious. And religious doesn't necessarily mean spiritual. By spirituality, I mean connection, recognizing our connection, because we are connected, but just recognizing our connection with the divine force. Separation is an illusion. We are all connected. Everything is connected. Everything in the body is connected. All human beings are connected. We are connected to each other. We're connected to the planet. We're connected to this God or whatever you want to call it. And this lack of understanding of connection is behind much of what we call disease. Health comes from the word whole. Health means whole. It's the opposite of disconnection. Health is whole. Disconnection is unhealth. Dis-ease is disconnection. We're out of ease when we're disconnected. When we're disconnected or we feel disconnected, we go into fear mode. That activates the sympathetic nervous system, and behind all chronic degenerative disease, guess what? You're going to find an activated fear response. And that's where spirituality comes in, mental strategies, emotional strategies, visualization. Why do you think athletes visualize? All great baseball players, football players, basketball players, they visualize. 
They use mental strategies before they, uh, before they go into an athletic performance. We're all athletes. If they're doing it, we should be doing it. And don't forget the emotional aspect either. Love, forgiveness, peace of mind, contentment, they're all extremely important when it comes to, when it comes to health and when it comes to supporting the immune system. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us welcome John in Michigan. John, what's going on? Good morning, buddy. Well, Ben, I, I have a friend that's been diagnosed with actinic keratosis and okay. then another one that has red bumps on their skin, their arms, um, uh, showing up. Uh, it's, you do always say the skin is a sign of what's going on inside. Internal. Absolutely. That's why dermatology is the dumbest of all the medical professions, the dumbest. Right. Okay. And then would your They've been prescribed something I've, I've heard with some retinol in it, but whether it's a product that you would recommend for that, uh, if well, that's addition. The, the problem with the retinol, are you sure it was retinol and not retin-A or retinoic it acid? Might be, it might be retin-A, but, yeah. and then before I, I'll finish by saying, and they were told to stay out of the sun and use sunscreen. Of course they were, because, you know, that's just what dermatologists do. It's like they're on automatic. They don't think. So here's the deal. Act, let's talk about actinic carrier. Well, let's talk about the red bumps first. Anytime you have redness on the skin, you have an immune reaction. The body's protecting itself from something. But here's the thing. There are cells inside the skin that are reading the blood. And they're looking at what's inside the blood and they're reacting accordingly. So if there is toxicity in the blood, these cells, these immune cells, will read the toxins in the blood and they will initiate an immune response. Anytime you see redness or rashiness or some kind of uh, lesion that just pops up on top of the skin, consider something getting into the blood. If they're not IV drug users, chances are good it's going to be coming in from food. So always work with the digestive system when you have an unexplained uh, a rash or redness, a condition of redness on the surface of the skin. And there could be other factors. Sometimes it has to do with blood vessels becoming weak and breaking. But first check on the digestive system. The way you do that is just look for digestive problems. If you have any kind of digestive health issue in combination with these unexplained rashes, guaranteed when you fast, your rashes are going to start to diminish. And that's another thing you could do. Stop eating and watch what happens to your rashes. Or, alternatively, eat all your favorite foods and watch what happens to your rashes. You could do it either way. Now, as far as actinic keratosis goes, that is a kind of scaly, rough patch that shows up on the skin in response to ultraviolet radiation, in response to the sun. So the sun will get blamed. But the skin shouldn't be responding this way to the sun. It's an inappropriate response, again, following some kind of immune destabilization. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break, John. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We're talking to John in Michigan about... Uh, about red spots and actinic keratosis. John, you there, man? Yes, I am. Okay, I so red spots always want to consider digestive health issues if they're unexplained. Uh, let's see if you can link digestive health problems to the skin. Uh, in other words, by fasting, or you can do a, a fast or swear OV cleanse. That's another great way to clean out the clean out the intestine, get on a, do a half a bottle of swear OV every hour for maybe 12 or 24 hours. See if the condition improves. Or alternatively, eat your favorite foods and see if the condition gets worse. That way you can assess the, uh, the, digestive rela the, the relationship between the digestive system and the skin. Topically, zinc oxide sometimes helps. Topical Benadryl cream will sometimes help. But these aren't going to really take care of the problem. They may just take care of some of the unpleasant symptoms, especially if there's itching. As far as actinic keratosis goes, that's a sun reaction. It shouldn't happen. It's not the sun's fault. Don't blame the sun. Blame an instability in the skin. Uh, again, always look to the digestive system first. There's a really interesting relationship between essential fatty acids, omega-3s, and omega-6s in the skin. There's no omega-3s really in the skin to, of note. Most of the, the omega-3, uh, 
most of these skin's essential fats are omega-6s. So using omega-6 containing oils uh, orally, uh, your ultimate EFAs perhaps, also something called GLA, you can get that as a capsule. It's found in evening primrose oil. GLA is also in our ultimate, uh, our ultimate EFAs and ultimate, I think, ultimate EFA plus. One or the other has a, a, they both have GLA, but one or the other has more GLA in it. G as in George, L as in Larry, A as in as an apple. Um, also, there's some really interesting uh, literature about vitamin B3, niacin, and actinic keratosis, and skin health in general. Using niacin, or your ultimate niacin for longevity, one or two caps, uh, one or two tablets a day. I think it's tablets. Uh, also, you can make your own topical niacin products. Put a little niacin in your favorite cream and apply that topically. Of course, topical vitamin C always is going to be important for all topical health issues, all skin health issues, anti-aging, rashes, itching, healing. I uh, use my omega-6 healing cream. Have your uh, friend with the, uh, with the actinic keratosis go on truthtreatments.com and get our omega-6 healing cream. Also, if they don't want to use the toxic stuff, the, the Retin-A, which contains preservatives and propylene glycol and a little touch of Retin-A, and they want to get a bunch of vitamin C with their retinoid product, have them use our Truth Retinol uh, 5% gel. Now, these, are, again, are not going to take care of the problem. They'll take care of the symptoms. The problem is going to be internal in the digestive system as well as, uh, and you can correct some of those problems using um, probiotics, good bacteria, digestive enzymes, uh, and the Swear of Cleanse, and also, of course, the healthy, the healthy Start Pack. And then you may maybe want to try some Ultimate Niacin as well. All right, I'm going to move on, John. Yep. Anything else? Thank you. Thank okay, you, good deal. Have a great day. All right, Jim in California, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Yeah, hey, uh, what is the inulin? I N. Inulin is very. Where are you reading that from? Is it a longevity well, product? Well, it's just. Uh, I think I heard you talking about it one time. It's great stuff. Absolutely, and very what, underappreciated. What does it do? It's a fiber that uh, that uh, bacteria in the gut eat, and uh, it's technically they call it a prebiotic. It's a type of soluble fiber, and when these bacteria, when your gut bacteria eat it, a couple things happen. Number one, they proliferate. So it's like food for the good bacteria. It's sustenance for the good bacteria. They call it a prebiotic. Prebiotics are food for the good bacteria. But here's the really cool thing. When we feed our bacteria, not only do the bacteria grow, but they thank us. They love us. They give us gifts. And the gift they give us is the gift of short-chain fatty acids, SCFAs. So you, we give the bacteria prebiotics or inulin, which is a prebiotic. The, the bacteria eat the inulin, and then they release these SCFAs, which are unbelievably valuable. Number one, the SCFAs are like energy, uh, provide energy to your colon, to the cells of your colon. They're food for your colon. Number two, they go into your brain, they go into your blood, and then into your brain to make you feel good and make you feel happy. Number three, they're appetite suppressant, so they help you lose weight. So they're great for your brain. They're great for your mood. They're great for your, uh, if you want to try, if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to go calorie restriction for longevity reasons. And on top of all that, you, you, you uh, increase, uh, you uh, uh, stimulate the proliferation of these good bacteria in the gut. Can it you is, buy, buy that in like a you, pill? You bet. You bet. You can buy it. Uh, and just do, do it by the teaspoon, put it in your smoothie. But it's also found in uh, mushy vegetables, uh, squ uh, squishy vegetables. Uh, uh, asparagus, artichokes, onions have some, uh, garlic has some. Of course, you also get other nutrients. If you get all your phytonutrients if you do it from veggies, but you can get straight inulin. I used to use inulin in my skincare products. Uh, inulin has some really interesting properties topically. It helps soften the skin. It helps sustain uh, the bacteria that are in the skin. Keep in mind, you got good bacteria in your skin, too. You got You, you can got rub bacteria. it on your skin? Heck, yeah. Heck, yeah, you can rub it on your skin. Uh, it's a great moisturizer, great skin softener. It's soluble fiber. It absorbs water. It's a liquid then, huh? No, no. It's a powder. It's a oh. powder, but you mix it with water, and it will, it will swell up. If, you, wow. if you're using them, if you're uh, uh, making your own homemade masks, uh, you can add a little inulin. It kind of swells up, and it will provide some body to your mask. Just, it's wonderful stuff. Big time. I, I, did you hear me talking about it on this program? Or? Yeah. Oh, it's great ago. stuff. Great stuff. Weight loss, diabetes, benefits for diabetes, mood benefits, as I say, for the brain. Rub it on your skin, too, for rub your it belly on your, and stuff if you want to lose weight? No, you can't rub it on your belly if you want to lose weight, but you can eat it, and it'll help your colon, too. Not only will it help you lose weight, it'll help your colon also. Wow. Great if you're dealing with constipation issues, too, and you'll improve constipation. So, so the acid in your stomach won't kill it off? No, absolutely not. It's indigestible. Uh, how is the acid, acid in your stomach when you take a... 
probiotic tablet and chew that's it a, you know that's a great question uh, a lot of the probiotics are resistant to acid remember uh, a lot of these probiotics are actually making acid lactobacillus if you ever heard that term oh, lactobacillus yeah. lactobacillus makes lactic acid that's why they that's why it gets the name lactobacillus so th- they're tolerant to acid they actually make acids in many of these bacteria some some you'll have a problem with you have to go by the particular brand and you have to find out what the manufacturer says because there's different bacteria in different brands so the manufacturer's directions should be followed the manufacturer will know whether you should take it on an empty stomach or on a full stomach uh, Jim, probiotic can you put that under your tongue and does it do good probably not probably it's not going to get into your blood it probably has to go get digested has to go down hey the other two things is pregmentalone and progesterone what do they do uh, they're relaxing and they're building and they're um, mood enhancing and they tell the, the, the stress nervous system to stand down. They balance the stress response. Estrogen is the opposite of these things, and cortisol is, or cortisol is the opposite of pregnenolone and progesterone. So proge- progesterone and pregnenolone have a relaxing effect. If you're trying to sleep, have insomnia, you can't sleep, or if you have anxiety or jitteriness, or if you're dealing with hot flashes, if you're menopausal, or you're dealing with fibrosis, or uh, if you're producing too much estrogen, P- if you have PMS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, they balance out estrogen and stress hormones. Would either one of those help for low testosterone and low thyroid? Progesterone might. Uh, it won't be uh, thyroid. Definitely, absolutely, they'll help you with your thyroid. Uh, progesterone, progesterone might help you with testosterone because it balances out estrogen. But pregmetalone would be best one, huh? Mm, it's easier to get. I don't want to say it's best, but it's well, easier maybe to get. Take both, huh? For somebody that you that. might, you have to see. You know what the downside of these things is? Too much relaxation, so you oh. might get yourself t- a little tired. You'll have to play with it a little bit. Play with it a little bit. Is that a vi- yeah. more like a vitamin? Something? No, definitely not a vitamin. They're hormones. Are definitely they? Definitely not vitamin. They're What's both that? hormones? They're both hormones, yes, sir. Pregnenolone. Where do they get that from cattle? No, they actually derive them from various sources. Uh, soy is the main source, although uh, yam, progesterone also comes from yam, sweet potatoes. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but soy is the main source of these things. Jim, I want to get one more call in, buddy. Thank you soy for your call. Appreciate it. Soy is good for you. What, what's that? Soy, soy is bad. N- not necessarily. Not necessarily. Some good stuff it's in organic, soy. organic, maybe it's okay. No, it doesn't really have much to do with that, but it is, this, this, a little bit of soy might not be a problem. I would stay away from GMO soy, though. Hey, God last, bless you, my friend. Last thing is lithium orotate. What is that? Awesome good stuff. Or not? Awesome stuff. Awesome, that- awesome, awesome. Oh, my God. That's awesome what, stuff. What will that do to you? Again, relaxation will help you sleep. You're not going to let me go, are you? Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, you have a good one. You too, brother. Be good. Elaine, I tried to get to you here. I only got about a minute. <laughs> Jim well, wouldn't I let just, me go. Go ahead. I... I just had a quick question. Um, yeah. One of those nine health fairs is coming to my area. I wanted to go in and just get some blood tests just to get an idea of what my numbers are. I don't do the medical model. I don't take any medications. My husband, who listens to you religiously, says I don't need that. So I just well, wanted your opinion. Yeah, here's the problem with the blood tests. How do they know? They, they're going to judge you whether you're whether you're uh, got a problem or not based on standard reference ranges. But we don't know what your particular what a good number is for you personally for Elaine. They do statistical analysis, and on individuals, statistics are meaningless. Statistics only work in for mass numbers, not for individuals. You follow me, Elaine? So yes, when they I look do. at your numbers, it's not going to be relevant to you. You may want to, you may want to just for for laugh for for you know just to see what's going on. But it, I wouldn't make any decisions based on a blood test. Absolutely not. Go by your symptoms. Always okay. go by your symptoms, and don't pay any attention to the stupidity about cholesterol either. Because that's the one thing they love to test is for cholesterol, and also right. with blood sugar, that's another problem. Elaine, I got to go. I wish I had more time. Call back tomorrow. Let's talk about this tomorrow. All right. Thanks for your call. All right. That's all the time we have for today, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.